Hi, this is Dr. Bob Danhofer, the Public Health Officer for Douglas County with another of our COVID conversations. This is a time to talk about COVID and other things in public health. If you have questions, please send them to us at Facebook questions at douglaspublichealthnetwork.org. We have a good question this week uh, that will talk about uh, the use of Paxlovid. So in the world, we've got pretty good news when it comes to COVID because it's kind of flat. Uh, there's not a lot of new disease. There's still some disease in the Pacific Rim, especially in Japan, the Philippines, uh, New Zealand, and Australia. Uh, the big unknown, however, is China. So China officially reports that they're not having much disease and very few deaths. Uh, but people on the ground uh, paint a very different story. So a recent reporter went into Singapore, went into the, one of the hospitals and watched in the hospital where people were scattered everywhere, lots of sick people and uh, staff complaining that there was not enough staffing because there were so many sick staff. So who knows what's really going on in China? There is a report that there's lots of deaths every day and that the mortuaries are full. But again, officially, we know very little of what's going on. And this is important because in China, around this time of the year, they have Lunar New Year. And uh, it, for many Chinese, they work away from their home villages. So they live in a rural village and come to work in the city, and they only get to see their family, uh, for the most part, around the Lunar New Year. And the Lunar New Year is a one or two week celebration with lots of family and food and friends and, and noticeably lots of travel. So there's going to be a lot of travel in China, probably a lot of spread of disease. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out. It may just be that this burns through the Chinese population, uh, that they have hospitalizations and deaths. But by the time it burns through, there's enough background immunity in the population that um, that uh, they'll they'll be done with this. So we don't know. In the U.S., COVID is pretty quiet. There's a little bit of increasing disease in the big cities back east. So we're starting to see a little bit of increase in New York, a little bit of increase in the D.C. area. And that may presage an increase for us in the future. But the rest of the country is pretty quiet. Oregon has been pretty quiet and very stable now for about uh, eight weeks. The number of hospitalizations remains low. And of those hospitalizations, many of those are for things not related to the respiratory part of COVID. So we've seen a number of hospitalizations for people who get COVID and get sick. You know, they can't eat, they can't drink, and they wind up getting dehydrated. But we're not seeing very many people in the ICU or very many people on the ventilator. And that is really a good sign. We're still having some deaths, though, and the deaths are almost solely occurring among people who've never received a vaccine. In fact, we've not seen any deaths among people who've had one of the bivalent boosters, and that is really a good, and that is really a good reason for everybody to go out and get their bivalent boosters. We think we could decrease our hospitalizations and deaths tremendously if everybody would go out and get that vaccine. That vaccine is free. That vaccine is widely available, and we've given now twenty thousand doses in the county with no untoward side effects. So please go ahead and get your bivalent vaccine. One of the big things we'll be hearing about this week is about uh, the new variants. There's one called XBB uh, 1.5. Started in Singapore and is now spreading in the U.S. It is not doesn't seem to be more serious than the previous uh, variants, but it is probably contagious and it's different enough from the previous variants that if you either had the infection or the vaccine, you probably don't have as much protection as you did against the former strains. Yet, you still do get some protection from the bivalent vaccine. So we would recommend that people go ahead and get their bivalent vaccine. Uh, people have, there's news all over the place, everywhere from XBB is gonna be just another wave to XBB is gonna be the end of the world. In fact, people have called it the Kraken variant. I think that's going a bit overboard. The other things that we've been seeing have been influenza and the respiratory syncytial virus, or RSE. The good news is I think both of those have peaked uh, nationally in Oregon and even here locally in Douglas County. So we're starting to see a decreasing number of people with flu, a decreasing number of people with RSV, and that is really, really a good sign. Now, unfortunately, if for both of those diseases, we had an early sharp peak. And in about half the time when you have an early sharp peak, you're going to have another peak in four to six weeks. So it would not be shocking to have another peak of flu or RSV or both in four to six weeks because we did have that early peak. Uh, on the other hand, half the time there's an early peak and that's it. And so we may not see anything now. So right now we're at a relatively low time in disease. And so that's a good thing. Again, 
the best things you can do, get a bivalent COVID vaccine and um, go ahead and get your flu shot. And if you're sick, stay home. So the question of the week was, uh, does Paxlovid still work? You know, as we get all these new variants, do things like Paxlovid still work? Paxlovid does work. So Paxlovid works on the internal mechanisms of the virus. So when viruses invade your system, they take over the cellular processes of your cell to make more viruses. The cell then dies. It uh, gets rid of all those viruses into the bloodstream or in the surrounding area, and then new cells get infected. And so the way Paxlovid works is by disrupting those internal mechanisms. Those internal mechanisms don't change very much as we get new variants, and so Paxlovid still does work. Recent study came out of Israel that showed that for seniors, it decreased the risk of hospitalization by about two-thirds. Locally, we've seen been better than that, but about two-thirds reduction in hospitalization for seniors. Similarly, there was a reduction in deaths. Um, however, there were so few deaths uh, in Israel in a highly vaccinated population uh, that it was that uh, the difference was was smallish. Um, the other question is, what else could you use? So, in the past, we used these monoclonal antibodies like Regeneron or the Bev Tolovimab. The way these work is somebody gets infected with the germ, they find an antibody that attaches most uh, closely to it, and then in the lab make uh, uh, trillions of copies of this uh, antibody, package it, and then when you get infected, you can get that, uh, that concentrated antibody solution. Turns out that it takes a while to go ahead and, and make uh, this, right? You have to first have somebody infected, collect their plasma, uh, grow up that new antibody, and then develop it. So the Regeneron was uh, was based on the original strain back, the Wuhan strain, back in January 2020. It finally became available in small quantities in November, and not in big com in November of 2020, didn't become widely available until uh, the summer of 2021. This These new variants that are out there, the XBB only came up in the last six weeks. So even if they, uh, it's still going to be a while until we have good antibodies against that. So the antibody treatments, they don't work. The other one is something called molnupiravir. Molnupiravir is an oral medicine. It doesn't work that well. It's not that effective at disrupting the cellular mechanisms. So if nothing else works, molnupiravir probably works a little bit, but it's it's not very effective. But the Paxlovid still very effective, available at many pharmacies and clinics around town, uh, free to the to the person who takes it. And uh, really, we've not seen a lot of side effects from it. The Paxlovid does have some drug interactions with other drugs, so you do need to talk to your doctor about it. But uh, we've generally been able to navigate our way around those. So again, overall, pretty quiet time for COVID. This is a good thing. Uh, we think flu and RSV are also decreasing. So we're expecting a pretty nice January. Of course, we don't know about February. Uh, we could certainly have an increase when the XBB spreads. We could certainly have a second spike of flu or RSV. But for right now, things are good. So go out, enjoy yourselves, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Again, this is Dr. Bob Dananoff for the Public Health Officer for Douglas County.